futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good evening, all. I wrap Dean of Linden Associates with your evening flash update, and that's your end of the day. I'm going to call it evening. It's 6, 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time as I'm recording this on Thursday, the 4th of October, 2018. Guys, I put in the hours for you. We're here putting in all new computers in our operation, including for these videos. Uh, they'll make a difference, believe me. And uh, as we're working with all this, it's just <laughs> the hours go by. Here's what you have to watch tomorrow. You know, the metal markets are pretty much tracking sideways. The stock market is. We get the employment data tomorrow. And what they're looking for is 185,000 jobs. The unemployment rate to be at 3.9 or 3.8. That's percent of unemployment. But we've got to watch wages. That's what the market's really going to focus on. Where you can get thrown off in these numbers tomorrow, and you've got to be aware of it, is Hurricane Florence. How is that going to be taken in and how does the market react to it? Because interest rates, have, as you know, have gone sharply higher. The 10-year was today to 319%. It caused a break, a large one in the stock market. You had a little, very little recovery at the end of the day. But the algo traders will be all over this market when they see the employment data. The dollar index has been relatively strong, and the other currencies have been uh, weak against the dollar. So let's go to the gold. Again, on a weekly basis, you've been going sideways ever since you made the low of 1161.40. You've got this pattern right here of sideways. Now, I, one of you did call, and he said, well, this is a, a shoulder, a head, another shoulder we might break out to the upside. Okay. What you don't then don't want to do if you're right is you don't want to be taking out this low that you've got right there, especially closing under it. That can be an argument against everything. Obviously, if you can get up here into the 1217 zone on a close, that might look pretty good. The pattern in the market right now is one where you made a higher high and the last break low was under a previous low. You are not trending if you're looking for the pattern of higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs, lower lows, depending on an uptrend or downtrend. What you are doing is going sideways against what I call that line in the sand. And as the market's going sideways against this 18-day average of closes, you've taken in the Bollinger Bands. You tried to uh, push them out to the downside five days ago. See that break? You didn't go anywhere. You caught the bears with that. You then tried the upside, and you've pulled back to that 18-day average, and you're sort of sitting here. This is a market waiting for something to happen. In terms of momentum, you've got an up thrust in momentum. Not sharp one, but a gradual moving up thrust. I wish I could tell you the market has a bias. If I called it, I'd say it's up because the current price is over the 18-day average of closes. You're at 1203.70. That number is 1202.70. I'm waiting like everybody, which way is the market going to go here? You took the GLD, dropped it down, got today down to the 18-day uh, average. Also took out yesterday. If we take a look at yesterday's low, you got to 113.26. Today you made a lower low than that. And the market's trying to pick a bit back up here. We'll have to see what that does with it. Because you closed higher, I'll call it an outside day up. If you take out the low of today, you'd set into play the possibility of that lower Bollinger Band. Like futures, look at how this market's caught in that sideways action. When we come to the gold miners, momentum is turned down. You're getting a pullback in price. You made it a, a run up towards that upper Bollinger Band, ran into the resistance. I'll call support 118.50. If you, I'm um, rather 18.50. If you take out 18.42, you break this uptrend pattern. And again, this market is now working out of an overbought condition. Anytime one of the numbers that make up the slow stochastic is over 70, it's said to be overbought. The gold-silver ratio is doing everything I want at this point to 
give the metals uh, the boost from a traditional point of view where if you get the base metals going up often, you get the gold-silver ratio coming down. Is it all the time? No. But I think you'd agree as this ratio went higher, uh, silver was losing pretty good to the gold market. Silver market now has got support at the 1441 level. It's been working off an overbought condition. It's no longer in that. The trend is one of higher lows and higher highs. So I'm going to call this market at this point in an uptrend. The key for the numbers that 1441 level, unfortunately this number right here is around 1439 and a half. We'll see if the market can hold it. I wouldn't give you two cents after the uh, employment data comes out which way these markets go. The algorithm traders are going to grab control and from there we might get an exciting day to work with. Copper remains overbought. You had an outside day down yesterday, and that ended the uptrend. Now you have a higher high, lower low pattern. You still have upside bias since you're over the 18-day average, but you're very overbought. In the platinum market, the market is overbought. It's trying to hang above the 18-day average of closes. Again, no trade. You've got in, in, no trend is really the word I, I want meant. Lower low, higher high. Two levels of resistance, right here, 845.40, the 100-day average, and the black number is the upper Bollinger Band, support 822. If you were to let go, 799 could be a key number, the lower number there. You know, the interesting thing in the Palladium is when you lose an embedded reading, you normally go down and challenge the 18-day average. Hasn't done it yet, so I'm wondering if tomorrow's the day that sets that up. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know. You've got the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, and as I said, when you lose an embedded reading, the odds often are that you're going to go to that number. To get down to 1031.80, you're going to have to get through this right here, this last break low, and that was 1032.40, which would break the uptrend the way that we're set up right now. So it's not a number I'd want to see, but as I told you, I thought this market was losing its momentum against the other metals. In the dollar index, back up three days in a row to the upper Bollinger Band, and it's like you hit a brick wall. You don't seem to go anywhere with it. We'll know what it's going to do tomorrow after we see all these numbers, but you're at a resistance point in an uptrend where I think the pros have taken some money off the table, and now everybody's waiting to see what does tomorrow hold, what does it mean for interest rates and the like. And I'll be writing about that in my silver report. I'd like to get through tomorrow's number. I started doing all the chart work today, and hopefully I'll have that report done tomorrow. If you're not on my mailing list, you won't be getting it. How you get on is call my staff. You can go to our website, www.irapstein.com. Click on the front page. You'll see it's a carousel of free offers. You'll see the silver report. Click that on or click right up here, and that will take you this icon right to that page on our website. I'm Irapstein. Sorry to be so late, but I want to go home too. You have a good day.